14. We'll read the last few verses of this chapter. We're going to start in verse 24 and go through 28. Acts 14, 24 through 28. 
Luke writing about the end of Paul and Barnabas' first missionary journey. And after they had passed throughout Pisidia, they came to Pamphylia. When they had preached the word in Perga, they went down into Italia and then sailed to Antioch, from which they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they fulfilled. And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them, and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. And there they abode long time with the disciples. Let's pray. But we praise you for this time together for your words that's open in front of us. Thank the Lord for the, the worship and song that's already taken place here, Lord. And we look forward to, to further singing and worship this afternoon. And Lord, we just pray your blessings on every part of this service. But as we come down now, Lord, to the reading of your word, we pray your blessings on all of us. We pray, Lord, that we would open our hearts. Each one here this morning would just be faithful and obedient to your Holy Spirit. Allow this word to work in us and change us, to bring us about, Lord, what you have in mind for us, Lord, as we try to conform more and more every day to the image of your dear Son. Lord, we love you, we praise you, we thank you for everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we've come to the end of, of Paul and Barnabas' first missionary journey, and I'll remind you, like I've been saying all along, at this point it's their only missionary journey. We'll go back to that kind of same map we've been using all along uh, to kind of show where they've been and, and how they started. If you'll remember, they, they started in, in Antioch of Syria, which is, is over here on the right-hand side of the map, a little bit north of, of Israel, and uh, a place where Paul and Barnabas had become fixtures in that church, and, and the Holy Spirit uh, led them, and the church chose them out and sent them out to begin to go out into the areas and the regions around about and preach. And that started way back in Acts chapter 13 uh, as we began looking at, at this first missionary journey. And, and it, it, it lasted about a year and a half to two years of uh, this trek that they take. Uh, we've covered it in about two months now as we've looked at uh, at these verses in these uh, these two chapters, but but they get called out and, and they leave Antioch, and the first thing they do is sail to that little island Cyprus, and they stop off at at Salamis, and and you'll remember we, we talked about where they they called out the charlatan who was the the fake guy, and, and they set him straight, and then then a man of a, a great report and a, an important man gets saved, and, and they move across there to to Paphos, and they leave there and head up and land in the area of Pamphylia, and then, then they're going to make their way around all that region. Again, that's the region of Galatia. That's where uh, all these churches get started, and that's where once Paul gets back to Antioch, he's going to write a letter back to them, and that letter is in our New Testament as, as the letter to the Galatians. And, and they go and they, they preach in Antioch and Pisidia, which is a different Antioch, which was a common name for a city uh, at that time, and it was there that that, that Paul and Barnabas and the folks that were with him had went into the temple and everything was done and, and they stood up and asked Paul if he had anything to say when he got up and preached that message that we covered over several Sundays uh, that powerful sermon that he delivered so powerful that on the next Sabbath day the whole city came out to hear it but even as things be began to go good opposition arose, the devil got involved they ran him out of, of Antioch they moved on from Antioch, as you look on the map there, and then they made their, their way into the to the area of Lyconium. They went to Iconium. They got ran about, out of Iconium. They got to Lystra. They got ran out of Lystra, but not only ran out, remember they stoned Paul, thought they'd left him for dead. He got back up, went back into the city, preached, left there, ended up in Derby. Derby's kind of where we ended up a couple of Sundays ago. They made their way down back through all the mountains and all the terrain they had done. And we talked about how instead of just going from Derby back to Antioch, they went back and went through all those other cities again, confirming the souls, making sure everything was set up, making sure there were elders in every church, that all the organization and everything, the administration was there. And then they finally make their way back, and we left off with them in Perga. They got to Perga and stopped there, waiting on their last 18 miles to get to Italia. And once they get to Italia, they're going to get on a boat. But they did what they've always done. It's kind of where we left off. They got to Perga, and while they're there, they preached the gospel again. 
And after preaching the gospel at Perga, that's where we pick up in the text of verse 25. And when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down into Italia. Italia is that last little port, that last little city right there on the coast of the Mediterranean. And then in verse 26, it tells us, and thence sailed to Antioch. The Antioch in Asia where they started. From whence they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they fulfilled. I asked Valerie, I said, what do you think that verse means? I think I kind of caught her off guard. She said, what do you mean, what does it mean? I said, well, what are they doing in verse 26? She said, they're going home. I said, bingo. They're going home. When Don called and couldn't preach this morning, it's amazing to me that our next verse we get to in Acts is Paul and Barnabas coming home. A homecoming. Wow. Kind of fit right in there, didn't it? They're going home. They've done all they could do. Year and a half, two years of of the ups, the downs, the goods, the bads, the preaching, the folks being saved, the being run out, the being persecuted, the being stoned and left for dead. They've done exactly what God and the Holy Spirit led them to do. And now they're getting to go home. Home. How special it is to come home. I asked Jordan. It's just so funny you hear you hear little Bryce. Bryce is he's a homebody. He likes to be at home. And when it's time to go, it's time to go. And you'll hear him him say, "I ready to go to my house. I ready to go to my house." There's just something special about home. I asked Brad, did he think our young folks would recognize this? I don't know that they'll recognize this. Our youngest folks. But everybody else in the house will recognize this clip real, real quick. And we all know that, right? Because, you know, back in the day, you didn't have the three three channels on TV, and once a year, they're going to show that movie, and you're going to watch it. Nobody you've seen it 28, 30, 50 times. Our young folks, y'all don't know it, but I don't know if it's on Netflix or whatever it's on, y'all need to go watch it. But we all know there's no place like home. Paul and Barnabas. We're going home. Imagine how they felt. They got on that boat there to tell you, and they started sailing across the Mediterranean, probably got to a point where they couldn't see land, but they know where they're headed. Then imagine how they felt in their heart when they started to see on the horizon the shores coming where they're about to get home. Imagine how they felt as they stepped off the boat and put their feet on the land of home. Imagine how it felt for them to get back into their church that had sent them out on this journey, on this voyage to preach the gospel and to start these churches. Homecoming. Verse 27 of the text again says, And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them. Now he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. They had a homecoming. They told them all about what happened. They went back and told them all the things that had taken place that we just get chapters 13 and 14 about that we just covered over a few Sundays, but it took them, again, almost two years of work and effort to get through all that. And now they've come home to tell everybody about it. There's no place like home. No place like Shannon. This place has been here 99 years. Next year we'll celebrate the 100th year of the church here in Shannon. I was thinking about that coming into this week and I was thinking about some tough times over the years where I thought, Lord, I just can't, I can't do this anymore. And I would always be reminded that Valerie would tell me, well, I'll tell you this, if you quit preaching there, I'm not moving. I'm staying at Shannon because Shannon had become home. So I guess if I ever went to another church, I'd be by myself and she'd still be here teaching Sunday school because this is her place. Shannon has become home for us. And I, and I was thinking about 
uh, you know, over the years, and, and, and I filled in back in 94 for a year, and then I was here for, for that homecoming. I was here for the homecoming of 97, right before August when we officially began as pastor. And so I was counting it up, and I said, I've been here for 29 homecomings. That's over half my life. And, you know, I was sitting there thinking, what's well, a long time? And then I got to thinking about all the, the, the folks who were, who were young when I got here and are still here. And this is the, the only church they, they've ever known. I, I think of folks like, like Brock and, and Jordan and Chad and, and Alan and Jake and Wade and Brady and, and Jason and, and Holly and Sherry who have grown up and spent their entire life in this church. And those are folks that, that were young when I got here. And then I got thinking, those are even folks older than that has been here all their life. You know, I, I think of, of Joe and Dana, Denise, Jimmy, folks that have been here longer than I've been alive, but this is the church that they have grown up in and been a part of. I think of Doug and Debbie, they have lived on this street all their lives, and, and I know Debbie and Timmy and Sandra have followed their dad around and, and been in church with him, but I think if you ask any one of the three, hey, what do you call home? They'd say, they'd say Shannon's home. Uh, I think about, about Charlie, and I think about Annette, I think about Stevie, I think about Evan, I think about Burnell, I think about folks that this is their place. This is what they know as home. And I realize that, that my time here is, is nothing. It's just a little bit of time. There's no place like home. I think about what all they've seen and experienced. And then I got with Brad, who is the, the master of putting together videos and we did it he did he did a phenomenal job on a short notice we just talked about this last sunday night and then he ended up going out of town and so uh he he pieced together and put together something really special i think so at this time we're, we're going to show that real quick charlie i agree you deserved all those awards when you start, <laughs> start looking at all who you had in that group my goodness but how special it is to walk through the doors of this place there's no place like home as the video mentioned, you can't you can't talk about homecoming. You can't think about Shannon without thinking about all the folks who have already gone on, all the mamas and, and, and the papas, and and we, and we miss them, you know. But guess what? In my best President Biden impression, they're at home. <laughs> <laughs> they're home. They're at the real home. We miss them at this home. But they're at the, the right home. You know, my favorite all-time most respected preacher, Joel Osteen. Yeah, I know that's facetious. Wrote a book called Your Best Life Now. If, I, if I'm a Christian and I believe this is my best life now, I'm in trouble. My best life is to come. This life has nothing. This home is nothing. As good as this home can get, it's nothing like the home that's coming. My best life is yet to come. I'm going to throw a few verses out there. Brock, if you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, the same Paul on this first missionary journey would write back after having built the church there in Corinth and he writes back and he says this, Therefore we're always confident knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we're absent from the Lord. Verse 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. And then verse 8, we are confident, I say, and willing rather, to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Paul says right now, we're at home here in this body, but we can't wait till we can be at home there in our new body. Peter in his first epistle, puts it this way. We know these verses, but you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We know that verse, but he keeps going. Verse 10, which in time past were not a people, but now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. And then he says this in verse 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. Abstain from freshly, uh, fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Strangers and pilgrims. 
Other translations say aliens. The, the fact, again, that we're just a stranger and a pilgrim in this world. We're just a stranger and a pilgrim right now because this is not our home. We have a real home that's awaiting. The writer of Hebrews puts it this way in Hebrews chapter 13 in verses 13 and 14. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. Verse 14. For here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. A lot of times I'll read the message version and, and the message says this. This world is not our home. We have our eyes peeled for the city that's about to come. Paul writes this to the church in Philippi, Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. For our conversation, our citizenship, our life is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. We are not at home. As good as this place is, it cannot compare to the home we have in heaven. Paul writes this in 2 Corinthians chapter 2. But as it's written, I'm in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. But as, as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love them. We've got a home waiting for us. One day, we're all going home. Every once in a while, we get a glimpse. But wow, what's it going to be like when we finally step foot into our heavenly home? Jesus told the, the, the thief on the cross, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Right at the end, in that last moment, that last night with his disciples before he would die, Jesus tells them this, John chapter 14, we know this, Say it, say it from, uh, from our memory. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, a home for you. Verse 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. That's the home that we're looking for. That's the homecoming that we look forward to. I ready to go to my house. Homecoming. I think about all that are there. I think about the folks uh, Denise mentioned. And it got mentioned. You can look around at spots and remember where people used to sit. And know that, that now they're at home and, and we're waiting on the time when, when we're at home with them. Each one of us got, got family members that we think of, that, that, that we know are there. I've I got a sister I never met. One day I'll get to meet. i got I got a big mama that's there that I miss. i got men in my life that meant a lot to me. Brother Campbell, Bill Tillery, Brother Hill that got, that got mentioned by Brock. Folks that are over there, but but when I when I start thinking about that, I have to step back and wait a second and realize that as good as it's going to be to see all those folks, I'm going to finally get to see Jesus, the one who I, I've seen pictures of what they think he looks like, the one that that I have spent my life trying to preach and teach and love, and, I, and I've never <laughs> met him. But I'm going to get to meet him. There was a song that was pretty popular about 30, 35 years ago. And it went like this. I dreamed of a city called glory, so bright and so fair. When I entered the gates, I cried holy. The angels all met me there. They carried me from mansion to mansion and all oh, the sights I saw. But then I said, I want to see Jesus. Because he's the one who died for all. And as I entered the gates of that city, my loved ones all knew me well. They took me down the streets of heaven. Oh, the scenes were too many to tell. I saw Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac. I talked to Mark, sat down with Timothy. Then I said, Timothy, I want to see Jesus. Because he's the one who died for all. 
for me. Home. Home. I ready to go to my house. What a homecoming we're earnestly waiting for. As Paul and Barnabas were getting home, brought, can we go back to the text in verse 26? And I'll finish with this. This they said the Antioch from which they had been recommended to the grace of God. And then that last phrase. For the work which they fulfilled. Or the work which they finished. Or a simple word for the work that they did. They finished it. They were sent out by the Spirit, by the church at Antioch, to preach the gospel, to start churches, to spread the word of Jesus Christ in the area of Galatia, and they did it. They finished it. They got back, and the folks at Antioch were happy to see them, but were glad to say, hey, you guys, you did it. You did it. We sent you out you did it. When I finally get home, man, I just hope Jesus can look at me and say, Tommy, you did it. You did it. I hope that will be all our prayers this morning. We, we all want to hear, well done. Done. Do. Did all the same root work. Just if the Lord can look at us and say, you did it. Man, I want us to be able to say like Paul. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I did it. I kept the faith. Henceforth there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but to all them that love his here. Can't wait to hear the Lord say, Welcome home. Home. I hope this is a special home coming for you today as we celebrate our time here at this great place with our eyes on an even better place. Amen. Let's stand while Sandra comes and Brad comes.